What's up, guys? So, part two of government and economic influences on the business. We spoke about what the government uh, might set as economic objectives, low, un low levels of unemployment, low levels of inflation, economic growth, and a healthy balance of payment. And also, we spoke about what some kinds of business activities might be and how they impact the society as a whole. Now, we're going to talk about more along the lines of the government, how firstly, the government controls business activities. So the government basically controls business activities based on these factors. They might control the production decision. They might influence on what or how to make something. We spoke about planned economies, market economies, and mixed economies, right? So uh, we saw that allocation of resources might just be in the hands of the government. But in this setting, we're not talking about that we're in a planned economy. We're talking about being in a market economy or mixed economy, sorry. So the government might be, will, will not tell you what not to produce, but they'll tell you, uh, actually, yeah, they actually might say what not to produce, but the government will tell you what to produce and how much of it to produce. Secondly, the government might try to influence working conditions, and that's based on making sure that the employees are safe, that um, all regulations are met, basically in terms of fire hazards and so on. And then also that those around uh, the business or the factory or the shop or anything are not affected. Also, the government will try to take care of the consumer as a whole. Businesses often tend to do something called advertising, which is basically selling something and promoting a product as a whole. And that can also be false. For example, if I'm wearing this shirt, uh, this shirt could be falsely advertised to give me superhuman powers, which I'm not saying it doesn't, but you know, it could also be that. So the government is there to make sure that I am not hurt as a consumer. Also, the government tries to make sure that the business activity protects the environment. The government needs to make sure that the business is not polluting whatever is around them, and therefore they'll use certain tools to curb that, and we'll get into that as well. And the final thing that they try to influence is the, yeah, the try to, the thing that they try to influence is the location and the setup of the business. Not all businesses can be located in one area. Therefore, the government actually tries to create zones and regions and make sure that not that businesses aren't cluttered into a certain area and certain types of businesses which make an industry are definitely not in the center of the city or near office buildings and so on and so forth. But how does the government control the activity? The first way they do this is by laws and regulations. So governments pass bills and laws that either protect the, that protect the employee, also provide equal opportunities for both men and women in, in the work, and then also provide uh, laws to protect consumers as a whole as to what extent do consumers have a right over demanding what they want and what price they want that product at. Secondly, the consume, well, consumer protection comes into this as well. So the government fights cases for those people. For example, if I'm at McDonald's and I order some food, but there's hair in my food, and that's not once, that's perpetual. My chicken nuggets, my mackerel, and my coke all have hair in them. The government has, yeah, it's pretty disgusting. The government might actually help me in, in assisting me in fighting a case against McDonald's and that. So also the government tries to control monopolies as a whole. And what that does is, what is a monopoly firstly? A monopoly is basically when there's one producer in that market for a certain product as a whole. Let's talk about shirts. Now, let's say that there's only one shirt company in the market and that company is Hollister for example, and Hollister is the only one making shirts. Now, the government doesn't want that because that means Hollister can charge ridiculous prices for the shirts and can start exploiting the consumer, which is why the government places antitrust laws which, which promotes competition in the economy. The government always makes sure that there's competition in, in the economy for the sole reason that prices stay even, businesses get an opportunity as well, and also so that the consumer is not exploited as a whole. All right. Now, um, how does the government provide assistance to businesses? One key way that the government might provide assistance to businesses is through regional assistance. What does that mean? Everyone who's in Karachi, for example, would know that there's an area called Site and there's an area called Korangi. Now, areas like Site and Korangi are industrial areas. Over there, you will not find any other businesses but factories. Industrial businesses are there. Of course, you will find offices there, you will find the Oxford University Press's office over there, but you will also find the printing press over there as well. So, industries which are in the, basically in the tertiary sector, in the secondary sector are situated over there. And what that does is that because those factories have a lot of air pollution going on and have a lot of heavy containers moving in and out, 
they don't want they don't want the factory to be located in Clifton of Defense, right? Or they don't want the factory to be located into Gulistan and Johar because at the end of the day, these industrial areas are located strategically around the cities. If the city has, let's say, a seaport, the industrial area is going to be situated in, in a certain radius around that seaport so that they can the containers can go to and from the port within a span of as low time as possible. Also, there might be regional assistance in the form of providing uh, for the citizens as a whole. Tertiary sector industries like, let's say, hotels would be situated in city centers and the government allots areas and plots accordingly for hotels to be made, for malls to be made, and so on and so forth. Now, small firms also get uh, a benefit from the government, get some assistance from the, uh, from the government, and primarily in the form of taxes. Now, let's say I'll give you a real life example in, in Hong Kong. If you set up a business right now and you're a small firm, of course, you're a small business, you just set up a business in Hong Kong, the government actually provides you with a lot of tax benefits to the extent that if you, say, um, didn't make any profit in the first year, of course, you won't pay taxes. But in the second and third year, if you've broken slightly above even, you still won't have to pay taxes because the government wants to promote you. Why is that? Because you are a small business, you are more likely to be labor intensive, so you will hire people here and there, and as a whole you're providing goods and services directly to the customer. So you're creating a great relationship amongst them, and then of course you're, all, you're helping out the economy as a whole. Now the final uh, way the government might provide assistance is through exporting. In the export industries, any industry which might be exporting, the government will, uh, that means that you are selling something outside your country, you are getting money for that. So because you sold something, let's say if I'm, selling, um, if I'm selling this receiver, if I'm selling a mic receiver outside to let's say India or Afghanistan or even America, I'm getting money in their currency. I'm getting money in dollars, dollars are coming into Pakistan, which is always good for me. Why? And good for the economy. Why? Because foreign reserves go up. So what will the government do for me? The government, if I, let's say I want a loan, I need a loan, the government might you know, allow me to get cheaper loans from either directly from the government or from banks as a whole. The government might help me in uh, getting my letters of credit made faster. They might you know, ease some custom duties for me as well. They also might just basically help me uh, transport my goods and services from my office or from my f facility to the port. So as a whole, the government tries to help businesses as well, but then also restrict them as well. The government needs to play the devil's advocate very often. So don't think that the man is always there to stop you from growing. The man is also trying to help you make money and also help the economy grow as a whole. Again, if you have any questions about this lesson or the past lesson, shoot us a question below. And from next week, we'll start off with a new chapter. Till then, take care.